Have your fantasy teams been struggling this year? Or perhaps you've been doing pretty well but want to put yourself over the top? Then make sure to visit our friends over at Finish First Fantasy Advisors. They are the premier one-on-one -on -one consulting firm that specializes in providing you with expert support to help guide you to the championship. You will be matched with one of their expert advisors to provide you with the season-long insight for your redraft, dynasty, or DFS formats. Their advisors will contact you weekly to answer all of your questions and provide you the needed information to get to the next level. Set up a free 15-minute consultation by emailing them at info at finishfirstfantasy.com or by visiting them at www.finishfirstfantasy.com. That's www.finishfirstfantasy.com. Welcome again to another episode of the Skull King Sports Fantasy Football Podcast. My name is Ryan Scullard. I am your host. And tonight we are going over our waiver wire madness for week. Can you believe it's week eight? We are halfway through the fantasy football regular season. And now we have we are almost halfway through the season, the, the fantasy season in general. This has just been crazy how quickly this has all um, gone past. So we um, we are going to hop right into the news. Um, there's a, a bunch of different uh, injuries to report on, and then uh, we're going to get right into the waiver wire madness for you tonight. So, um, so why don't we go ahead and just hop right into uh, the headlines? Today's headlines. All right, and of course, today's headlines are brought to you by the Sleeper app, the one of the best apps you're going to be able to find for fantasy football notifications, uh, as well as um, the the platform that they use for for playing your fantasy games. Uh, it's one of the best uh, that I have seen um, with their options, especially for dynasty leagues. Um, and so, make sure to check out Sleeper dot app, um, uh, whether it be on and the, their app is on Android, iPhone. Um, as well as you can use their online platform uh, on uh, PC. So, getting right into the news. Um, Odell Beckham Jr. is done with a torn ACL. So, I mean, looking at um, what that offense is going to have to do now, the, it seems like with Odell Beckham Jr. gone... I'm not. I'm not saying that he's the problem that the offense has had, but once Odell went down, it seemed like it seemed like that Baker was able to spread the ball around a little more. He, I mean, he did a great job targeting his uh, his tight ends and Harrison Bryant and David Njoku. Three of his five t uh, touchdowns went to them. So um, it'll be interesting to see where this goes. How much more work maybe Landry will get, um, and we'll and and again we'll kind of see who steps up in a more prominent regular role in terms of the wide receivers um, for for the Browns. But uh, for right now, OBJ is gone, uh, done for the year. So we'll again this we're gonna have to kind of look and see what's what's happening there in Cleveland as we move forward. Um, Devo Samuel is expected to miss a couple of weeks uh, with, I believe it was a hamstring, hamstring pull. So, uh, you know, Brandon Ayuk is going to be the guy to get um, as far as that offense. He has been um, extremely efficient with his work uh, in, in the time that Devo Samuel has been out. So and he's got a great matchup coming up against Seattle uh, this next week. Dallas, the Dallas Cowboys have actually stated that they would be willing to trade defensive end Everson Griffin, one of the guys they signed to, I believe, is a one-year deal. Six million dollars left on this deal, so it may, I mean, it could be possible for him to get moved. It's, I mean, he's definitely a guy that I would love the Seahawks to get just so that the Seahawks can have one pass rusher on this defensive line. Just get someone who can who can get to the quarterback. Because they don't have anyone. 
um, other than Jamal Adams, who plays safety and has been injured since like week three. So, um, or maybe it's even week two that he got injured. So, um, I would I would love to see I would love to see the Seahawks figure out a way to get Griffin uh, if they can. So, not that they have any any draft picks to send that way. I mean, they would probably have to send some sort of some sort of personnel in order to in order to get that uh, that deal done. So, Kenyon Drake um, has a uh, officially a high ankle sprain, um, and from what I heard, it sounded like he actually had a little bit of a tear in the tendon um, in the ankle. So, um, eligible to go on IR. So, it looks like it's going to be uh, Chase Edmonds' backfield for a little while. Uh, Chris Carson is week to week with a foot sprain, so there is an outside possibility he may be back for the San Francisco game. Um, that being said, it's more likely that it's going to be Carlos Hyde in that role, uh, with the possibility of Travis Homer. I know that um, there's there's at least a a questionable designation for Carlos Hyde in terms of um, in terms of his injury status for going into next week. All right, excuse me. Uh, moving on, uh, Christian McCaffrey is a long shot to play Thursday, most likely to be playing um, the next week in week nine. So that, that looks like it's the most likely um, time for him to come back uh, to be able to play. So for you CMC owners who are struggling, uh, you probably have one more week. I know I've got one seven let's see i'm three and four in one league because of cmc and austin eckler both going on ir um so yeah it's been it's been one of those kind of seasons in that league uh bruce arians has said that uh antonio brown can practice start practicing at the facility wednesday until then still everything is virtual and will be eligible to play in week nine so That'll give him a little bit of chance to get up to speed in this offense. Honestly, I think the person who's hurt the most by this would be um, possibly Mike Evans, though Mike Evans is already kind of, you know, I, I'm sure, I really think that Mike Evans is still playing a little bit hurt, to be completely honest. I think that's the reason why he hasn't been able to um, really be as explosive as, as we all know he can be. Um, and then also when you know when Chris Godwin comes back came back um, and is in the lineup, it, there's not a whole lot of targets for for Evans there e either. So um, though Scotty Miller got a whole bunch of work, I think Scotty Miller obviously is the one who's going to take a big step back once AB joins the team. So um, according to Kevin Stefanski, uh, Nick Chubb could return after the Week Nine bye. That would be great for all people who have Nick Chubb. Um, and so hopefully he's able to return. I think that would be good for Alvin Kamara too. So he's not take or not Alvin Kamara. Good grief, Kareem Hunt. Um, good for Kareem Hunt. So he's not taking on quite the load. I think it, I think it serves Kamara. Dang it! I did it again. It <laughs> serves Kareem Hunt uh, for Chubb to be there. I think they both play well uh, off of each other. So, and finally. Bill Belichick has stated that Cam Newton is absolutely still the starter for the Patriots. Uh, we'll see how what that does with their offense um, moving forward. There's just there's a lot of questions in terms of what's going on in New England. So, um, so I think that's all the news and notes that I've got for tonight. So why don't we go ahead and hop right into our waiver wire madness? <laughs> Waiver Wire Madness. All right. Here we go with our Waiver Wire Madness. Again, to kind of go over this, um, the way that it works, um, I know that you can check out our Waiver Wire rankings that we put up on the website. There, there is going to be a little bit of a discrepancy between those and what I put up here. The reason is those rankings are based off of a combination of um, ESPN and Yahoo, since those are the two biggest platforms um, that that Fantasy Pros is is associated with. Because of that, um, it takes a consensus across both those platforms um, to be 
rostered under 50% in both the platforms combined in order to be on their rankings list. So a couple of these guys I'm going to list maybe not, I mean, are not going to be as highly ranked, um, as highly rostered, and won't be on that list um, on our rankings. But because I mainly use Yahoo um, for my rankings and everything, or for my um, uh, for my lists, uh, for that reason, there may be a couple guys on here that are not listed uh, on that rankings list. So, so starting it off, uh, rostered in 44% of leagues. Um, I I said it last week, and as a as a sleeper, he didn't he didn't put up huge numbers, but he put up respectable numbers. Teddy Bridgewater, um, last week against New Orleans, he is going up this week against Atlanta, who gives up the most fantasy points to QBs and the fifth most to wide receivers. So I think that this opens up a big possibility for again Teddy Bridgewater to put up two fifty to three hundred yards and two touchdowns. And really, if you do that, that's a perfect streaming option. And, you know, if you look at at the guys that are, are on by this week, I know Deshaun Watson's on by. Um, trying to look at who else. Pulling that up real quick. Sorry, I don't have that right in front of me. Let's see. Make sure we got that. All right. For this week, the bye weeks are Deshaun Watson. Um, Ryan Fitzpatrick, it looks like. Gardner Minshew is, uh, is on, is on bye week. Actually, no. Yes, he's on bye week. Fitzpatrick was this last week. Sorry. So, Kyler Murray, Deshaun Watson, Gardner Minshew, and and Washington, and I don't think any of you seriously have Kyle Allen on your team unless you're in a two quarterback league. So, so those are so those are the guys that are on by. So, um, obviously for Kyle Murray and Deshaun Watson owners, um, you know I think that a, a solid fill in for you this week is someone like Teddy Bridgewater, especially with the matchup that he has. Um, the the second guy that I have on here uh, is Derek Carr. Uh, Roster in 29% of leagues, going up against Cleveland at Cleveland. Um, Cleveland gives up the seventh most amount of fantasy points to QBs, fourth most to wide receivers. And so um, really has a, a chance to put up a decent amount of numbers, a decent amount of, of points again. I mean, even this last week, while it wasn't great against Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay is one of the best defenses in the league. I believe they're actually, in terms of just yardage, like top three or top five um, in the NFL. Still threw for 284 and two touchdowns. Did have an interception. Um, so I think that Derek Carr, again, he's another one of those guys. If you're if you need help um, and you're dealing with you know the 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 bye weeks um, to to uh, Kyler Murray and Deshaun Watson, Derek Carr I think is another suitable option. Not great. But I think we'll at least he he'll give you streamable numbers. I think he's only had two weeks all season. Let me check it one more time. Two weeks all season of less than twenty points, um, in four point per passing touchdown leagues. So, really, he's been pretty solid um, all year. So, uh, moving on, we're gonna move on to the running backs. Uh, rostered in twelve percent of leagues, Carlos Hyde. Going up against San Francisco. Now, San Francisco gives up the least amount of points to running backs. That being said, Carlos Hyde in that in, in the offense for um, Seattle fills in pretty well in the in the the Carson role. Is not going to put up likely not going to put up potential running back one numbers that Carson can do even in tough matchups. That being said, his ability to catch the ball out of the backfield. Um. And his tough running style fits Seattle's offense well enough that he still could put up, again, flex-worthy, if not running back two, worthy numbers in your lineups this next week if you're if you're in desperate need of help. So Carlos Hyde is definitely one. Again, you'll want to watch throughout the day to kind of see, get a, a sense of what's going on with his ankle injury. Or I believe it's an ankle. I think he just said it was questionable and didn't list why. Um, with with 
hide having that questionable tag on him, at least in Yahoo he does. Just kind of keep an eye on what's going on with him and whether or not you know you maybe need to transfer over to Travis Homer. Travis Homer is not going to get you the rush yards. He's going to be more of the um, passing the backfield type of guy. Um, and after a couple of key missed blocks by DJ Dallas is probably going to be getting a lot more of the running a mo- lot more of the third down work against San Francisco than than DJ Dallas will if Carlos Hyde misses. So number two, again these aren't necessarily in particular order. I will have the I mean you'll see kind of my ranking order of them on the website, skullkingsports.com. Uh, number two, I have uh, Gus Edwards going up against Pittsburgh. Again, another tough matchup. Third least uh, amount of points given up to running backs. But with Mark Ingram, we're not sure whether or not he is going to be healthy for this next week. Um, if he is going to be good to go or not. I have not seen... Um, I've not seen anything on him yet. In terms of in terms of uh, his, you know, he still just lists as questionable. He has really not had a very good season. He's only had two games of over ten points, and both those just happen to be games where he scored a touchdown. Um, so Mark Ingram is struggling. Um, he has a high ankle sprain. Um, and so we'll kind of see, but. For me, Gus Edwards has been the more um, productive back anyways. Um, looking at, at, at Edwards' numbers, I mean, overall, he Edwards has a better um, yards per carry. Um, has only gotten in the end zone once. And again, he struggled against tougher defenses, but with a, an offense that basically does everything in the run, um, a lot of people are expecting J.K. Dobbins to be the guy this next week, and J.K. Dobbins has not been getting as much work as Gus Edwards. Gus Edwards has been getting more more carries. So, for me, I think um, you know even even in the injury, Mark, you know, uh, to Mark Ingram, Edwards' function is the main back. So I think that's most likely going to stay that way. So um, Gus Edwards, actually, in terms of what he has done, um, looking at uh, next gen stats. Uh, Edwards is one of the more efficient runners in terms of getting to the line of scrimmage um, as well as one of the quickest to get to the line of scrimmage. So I, I prefer I prefer Gus Edwards right now to J.K. Dobbins. Uh, another one, Jamichael Hasty. Right now he's not projected for anything, but the reason for this is uh, the reason that I've got Jamichael Hasty on here um, rostered in 21% of leagues Um he got he had rushed nine times for thirty seven yards in the game behind or sorry, nine times for fifty seven yards. Fifty seven yards, sorry. Uh, uh against New England. Nine times for thirty seven yards the week before. Um with with Jeff Wilson injured with a high ankle sprain. Raheem Mostert out with a high ankle sprain. Jarek McKinnon has been not getting any work at all and we still aren't sure if Tevin Coleman is going to be back from IR for this game for for Seattle Jamichael Hasty looks like he's going to be the guy to take the lead to to take the lead um even over Jarek McKinnon so I think Hasty is the guy if if everyone else is injured and not playing so and Again, Seattle gives up the 12th fewest amount of fantasy points to running backs, but they have been more susceptible giving up points to running backs over the last couple weeks. Uh, one other for you is LaMichael Pirine, uh, rostered in 16% of leagues. Again, all these are according to Yahoo. Um, last week, 11 carries for 39 yards and a touchdown against... Uh, Buffalo going up against KC this week. Uh, KC gives up the 17th fewest um, points to running backs, so right middle of the pack. So not great, not good, um, but not bad either. So excuse me, got the hiccups a little bit. So P Ryan played 70% of the snaps this last week compared to Frank Gore who only played 28%. So 
Um, I think that Gase is going to stick with Pirine getting most of the work. And so at this point, if you're desperate for a running back, I think that he can provide flex-worthy, um, you know, probably running back three or four uh, work for you in production. Uh, again, it's more of a desperation play, but at this point in the season, if, you've, if you're dealing with a bunch of injuries, you may not have much of a choice. So um, I think that he will get the, he will get the volume, um, enough volume to at least hopefully provide you some flex appeal. Moving to the wide receivers. Uh, let's see, we started off, uh, mentioned him earlier, uh, rostered 49% on Yahoo. Brandon Ayuk against Seattle. Seattle gives up the most fantasy points to wide receivers. So uh, if if Ayuk is available, pick him up, take him. Um, if you've got Debo on on IR, grab him. Grab Ayuk. Uh, he'll. I think. I think between the two of them, it's not very often you can say this, but when someone subs in, that that um, that they're going to be an equal uh, contributor. And a lot of the times that has to do, you know, more more often than that, we're we're talking about you know running backs and you know the backup coming in. Is he going to provide as much fantasy value? Not usually. Wide receivers, especially with how they're using the San Francisco offense, that tends to actually be the case that um, they're going to provide the same type of value. And so Brandon Ayuk, um, even in the games he's played with Debo Samuel, has kept up with him. So uh, Ayuk, I think, is a great pickup for this week. Another guy. Cole Beasley um, targeted, what was it, 11? I, I think it was 11 times or 12 times this last week um, against the um, against the Jets. Let me pick it up right here. 12 times, 11 catches for 112 yards. So that was his second 100-yard game of the season. He is currently... only had one game of less than six targets where he had four three catches for 32 yards and touchdown that game uh i talked about this last week that he is a guy that you need to pick up he is he is providing wide receiver three value flex play value in full point ppr leagues in full point ppr uh, now going back 20 games he's 17 of 20 in terms of having at least nine points, nine PPR points in a game. Of his last 20 games, 17 times he's done that. Um, in the last, was it se- this game? I mean, just this game or this season, seven weeks. Only one week has he had less than six targets. And he just so s- happened to still score a touchdown in that game. He's had three. Three games under ten, only one game under eight, and he had seven point eight. So this guy, oh, and that's in half point PPR. Full point PPR, he has one game under ten points in full point PPR. I was looking at half point as I was talking about this. So, so yeah, so he is guys. He is a guy you need to pick up. Um, he is going to provide you value. Um, and then going up against this week, uh. New England gives up the 13th most wide receivers, and he runs a lot of his stuff in the slot, so he's going to be going up against, um, he's going to have the better matchups. Uh, next, Nelson Aguilar. I can't believe we're actually saying this, but Nelson Aguilar needs to be picked up. He is now the wide receiver one for Derek Carr in this offense. Um, he now has three consecutive weeks with a touchdown. He's got four in six weeks, or three consecutive games with a touchdown because they had a bye week last week in week six. Um, 12.4, 13.7, and 19.2 in half-point PPR. But four weeks, or four different weeks with a touchdown, um, he is getting he's getting the targets. And he goes up against a Cleveland team that um, they gives up the fourth most amount of points to wide receivers. So he's he's got a good... A good matchup again this week. So definitely a guy to watch. Uh, the next two, both these guys are on are on the the, the Tennessee Titans. Uh, Adam Humphreys roster in fourteen percent. Corey Davis in twenty eight percent. 
Um, let me start off with Corey Davis. Rostered in 28% of leagues. The reason I like Corey Davis is that he is still producing, even with A.J. Brown producing. Ten targets in this game. So he had two games that he missed because he was on the COVID list. In four games where he's actually been up and playing, he's averaging, let's see, let me do the quick math in my head, seven, eight targets a game. Averaging five catches a game. Has two touchdowns. Now, a lot of his work this last week against Pittsburgh was short yardage, six catches for you know only 35 yards and a, and a touchdown. But again, going up against Cincinnati, who has given up a bit, uh, 14th fewest to wide receivers. So again, right in the middle of the pack. Partially because they just bleed points to running backs. But I think that, again, Corey Davis is getting targets. He only has one game this season that he's actually played in where he hasn't gotten 10. No, even in full point PPR, he's gotten at least 10 points in all four games. So, Corey Davis is a guy, again, at 20%, 28% rostered uh, on Yahoo. He's definitely a guy that should be, should be getting picked up. Uh, and then Adam Humphreys, again, he's the slot guy in this offense. Um. He's been kind of all over the place a little bit. Had a little bit of a down week this last week. But uh, seven targets, six, seven. Um, had week five where he was on the COVID list. Six targets. And then this last week against Pittsburgh was his first week with less than six targets. Um, part of that, I think, was just the defense. Um, you know, going up against Pittsburgh, who's one of the t best defenses in the league. So not necessarily against wide receivers. I get that. But with how many, you know, with how much they were giving out, the Pittsburgh was giving up to A.J. Brown and to Corey Davis. Um, it makes sense that maybe Adam Humphreys wasn't as an involved. So, um, again, I think he's got a good matchup this next week against Cincinnati. Moving on to the tight ends. Um, Richard Rodgers is our first one. Um, and really this is because we are still waiting for Dallas Goddard to come off of IR. Um, and then we've also got Zach Ertz who went on IR. So, again, we've got a, a quarterback in um, Carson Wentz who loves targeting his tight ends. So, Richard Rodgers, eight targets, six catches for 85 yards in his last game against the New York Giants. Going up against Dallas, who gives up the 12th most amount of fantasy points to tight ends. So, again, kind of middle of the pack, but a little bit easier schedule. Um, I think he could be in for another decent amount of points. So he is definitely a, a guy that I am looking at at least possibly putting into a uh, into a DFS lineup this next week. So I think that he could be uh, a, a decent streaming option. Again, looking at uh, who we have uh, who we have for bye weeks this week. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and Logan Thomas, Darren Phil. So there's not really guys that are, are going to have. We don't really have anyone big that's on a bye week this week. So, um, but again, if you're dealing with injuries, I think that he is a guy that you could that, that could fill in for you pretty well. Uh, number two, uh, Gerald Everett, eight percent rostered, going up against Miami. Miami gives up the third fewest points to tight ends. I understand it's not the best matchup, but uh, with Higby kind of be, you know being back and forth, looking at what um, Gerald Everton has done, let me pull up his his things. Uh, scored a touchdown tonight, four catches for 28 yards and a touchdown. Has had at least four targets in the last three games. Uh, one of those games he actually had a running touchdown. Uh, four catches for um, 90 yards in a game. So. Uh, I like what he can provide. So I think that, uh, I, you know, I went into this year, I don't, I didn't think that Tyler Higby was a guy that was going to set the world on fire like he did at the end of it last year. Gerald Everett being healthy is taking away some work from Tyler Higby. And so just looking at kind of the last, what Tyler Higby has done this year, um, had weak two where he had five catches for 54 yards and three touchdowns other than that 
He has had four targets in the last few weeks. He's had two, four, two, and four targets. And then was out this week. So he's not lighting the world on fire. They're not necessarily just going to him. So, uh, again, I think that Gerald Everett is a guy that should be rostered in more in more leagues across uh, across platforms. The last one I've got for you is Harrison Bryant. And, and this is kind of a Harrison Bryant or David Njoku. Um, you know, the, the Browns last week, this past week, started Bryant over Njoku. I understand Njoku was coming back from injury still. Um, still probably getting his legs under him a little bit. But only had one target. Well, no, one target in week five, three targets in week six for one catch. And then three targets for two catches. One happened to be for a touchdown this week. So I can I know that Njoku is is a bit of a beast and possibly could be getting used more. But seeing what they what they were using with Harrison Bryant, who is just you know five five targets, four receptions, has been there the whole year. Only had one game. Look, he's gotten two targets in most of his games. But we'll see now that they don't have um, Odell, do they start pushing the ball out to the tight ends a little bit more? So definitely interesting to see. All right, that was the last one I've got for you. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen. I hope you guys are able to get the um, the waiver wire uh, picks that you are wanting that are going to best fit your team. Again, these are all, again, I want you guys to hear me. I am not a guy who's going to say this is the guy you should pick up, and if you don't, you're wrong. All I do is I provide projections, and I provide speculation, and I provide my opinions. Um, my opinions aren't always going to be right. That's just the way it is. Um, no one's opinions are always going to be right. Uh, we're talking about a, a, a quote-unquote profession, a an industry that is all based on speculation and best guess, where the best rankers and the best prognosticators are maybe right half the time. So um, I hope you guys are able to, again, get the guys that you're looking for. Um, go with your gut. You guys got this. You you know you know your team and what your team needs. So, um, again, this has been the Skull King Sports Fantasy Football Podcast. My name is Ryan Skullrude. Go win your games this week, guys. We'll talk to you later. Hey, Skull King Nation. Thank you for listening to the Skull King Football Podcast. Did you like this episode? If so, be sure to go to iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and YouTube to subscribe. Also, please leave us a rating and reviews to let us know how we can better help you rule your leagues.